So I want to start by mentioning Sphere, a new platform that you've released a, a month ago exactly. And um, according to your statement, this is meant to help publishers share each other's content and reduce their dependency on Facebook. Um, and this is interesting, I think, because a decade ago when Facebook became an extremely popular tool, extremely popular social network, um, the media and publishers adopted it as their way, to, uh, their threshold to the digital world. And right now there's been more than a backlash. What happened since? So starting with uh, Facebook, I think we've seen it in waves that are pretty clear. Facebook tries to get a big audience of consumers and get them addicted to the feed. And uh, when something is done for them, uh, they, they dump it. They, it's not that they care greatly about publishers as much as they didn't care greatly about game uh, companies uh, before that, as long as, it's, uh, as, long as it serves uh, the, uh, the user, that's what they're focused on. And AppBrain is a pu purely 100% publisher company. And so our attempt with uh, Sphere is to try to restart the basically how the publishing industry thinks about the business. Uh, it was really great to hear the, uh, the CTO of the New York Times now because I think they're so unique in how they run the business, having a subscriber base and being focused on user and, and user long-term long value. Uh, publishers for so long have been really focused on key metrics that are squeezing the lemon. We got 100 people here, 1,000 people. We're not totally sure how they came. We're certainly not sure if they ever come back, if Facebook gives them to us again. And so while they're here, we'll just extract as much money as we can from advertisers, which is, in term, industry terms, uh, RPM. The idea with Sphere is let's get publishers sharing, sharing their content so they share the audience, so they rely on each other instead of all relying on Facebook. And in that process, basically reset how the entire publishing industry thinks. Instead of trying to squeeze uh, maximum revenue from advertisers with each visit, let's try to get the maximum engagement from users. Let's try to have them come back tomorrow as the main KPI. But in a way, isn't it just creating a different dependency? Right now, the publishers are dependent on Facebook and on Google for uh, engagement and for uh, readers to reach them. And you offer them a different tool, but then they will depend on tools like yours and tabulas. Yeah, so uh, I think no company ever has, has ever built its all uh, of its <laughs> own technologies. And publishers certainly at this point uh, need partners to work with. Uh, we at Outbrain invested. Oh, sorry, is that the comment? <laughs> OK, should I start over the whole panel? <laughs> um, is this better? Worse? Anyway. Uh, better? Yeah? OK, I'll shout. Uh, we've invested over $150 million in, in the core technology of Outbrain over the years. And I, I just don't know many publishers that would have the appetite to build something like that themselves. So that's one aspect of it. OK. Um, the, the other, better? Good. OK. The, uh, the other aspect is in any, anything that requires a cooperation of multiple publishers, be it a recommendation engine across publishers, be it a subscription uh, uh, paywall uh, platform for multiple publishers. It's just very difficult for multiple publishers to get together without breaking the law and with all the, fight, you know, the, the competitive uh, uh, um, uh, aspects of it and try to figure out how do we build a platform together. So in that sense, I think companies like us and Taboa, companies that are uh, truly publisher, purely publisher companies, uh, I think there's a lot of value in publishers uh, using that. And at the end of the day, we don't have an audience of our own. Uh, users don't come to Outbrain, they come to our partners. And uh, therefore, I see Sphere more as them relying on each other rather than each of them relying on Facebook. OK. Um, luckily, we were uh, preceded by a very interesting lecture, as, as you said, by uh, uh, the New York Times CTO. And he mentioned um, getting ready for the cloud uh, while we already, the world is already going serverless. Um, do you think the publisher, first of all, realized there was a battle going on too late? Uh, and second of all, as we say in Hebrew, we always get, get ready for the, for the previous war. Um, so the publishers are like fighting last year's fights while technology is already running ahead? 
So uh, yeah, yes and no, and this is not <laughs> just publishers. I think any person in the world in any company probably has, uh, has that effect of uh, fighting yesterday's battles. I, I think back to what the CTO of the New York Times said, having a core principle of here's, here's our guiding light, as we call it at Outbrain, our lighthouse, because we're all ex-Navy folks, uh, I think it just helps crystallize the, uh, all the future of uh, should we do this or should we not. And for them, I think it's a great example of saying at the core, advertising is important, all that is important, but the core of it is how do we get the long-term value to the user so that they subscribe. And I think it just clarifies a lot of the go-forward things of how to deal with social networks, how to deal with cloud, how to deal with blockchain, God knows what. Okay. Um, since January, we've witnessed uh, two changes in uh, the Facebook news feed. Uh, the first one was uh, focusing more on a post from uh, friends and family. Uh, and the second was some updates to the branded content. Um, in your opinion, is, is Facebook doing what's right for the, uh, for the users? Or is Facebook doing what's right for Facebook? Ooh, I, uh, <laughs> Facebook, I think, does what's right for Facebook. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's how they run things. I, I, you know, I don't obviously know the internals of uh, Facebook, but it seems to me between the, just the burden and the headache of uh, fake news and the elections and all that that is just uh, dawning on them how messy uh, their role was, was in it, uh, and probably a uh, drop in usage of, you know, when we go to Facebook, it probably means, uh, it's a mess of many different things. So I think between those two, they probably just decided to focus on having a clear version of uh, what they are for the user. And I'm sure Facebook does what's good for Facebook. I, I would not be worried for them. Okay. Uh, when we talked prior to this uh, conversation, we talked about fake news and you, you mentioned that fake news is not a, a matter of politics, it's a matter of money. So it's both. I, I think it's important to understand there's two big types of uh, fake news. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one that we're all aware of now since uh, 17 or 16 is the political one of uh, Russia and planting fake news and trying to disturb uh, uh, countries in elections. And that, that is a very valid one. I, I think from a business point of view, it's probably tiny. It's uh, all you need to do, and this is why I think the Russians focused on on uh, Facebook is you need to plant a seed of with a paid campaign that later, later gets spread through social, through friends and family. And I think that's why they targeted social networks and not folks like uh, Outbrain. Uh, the other piece, which I think is much bigger and has been around for a while, is the financially motivated fake news. And that, that could be political fake news. It looks like a political story about Trump or Hillary or whatever, but the motivation is actually purely financial. It's how do we get uh, users into content that costs almost nothing to create, has some advertising, and do an arbitrage game. And that, I think, is uh, huge. Uh, I think Outbrain was the first one to coin the words uh, fake news or fake content, I think back in 2011 or 12, so about five or six years before the rest of the world. And it was purely the financially motivated one. I think it's still a big thing at Outbrain for as long as we could. We've been very clear against fake news and have uh, little to none of it in the network. Um, can we get rid of fake news uh, without educating the public, educating the readers? I, so it's a combination. I think education <laughs> is important. People understanding what they're clicking into is important. Uh, but the business models also uh, matter, matter a lot. So the business model dominating you know, Google, Facebook, Outbrain, pretty much anyone in the space is a cost per click uh, business model where advertisers pay per click. They have an incentive to actually create fake news and headlines that gets the click the rate up so that they can reduce price. So again, a lot of the fake news issue is just financially motivated. And I, I think education is important. Changing business models is important. Uh, with our Sphere launch, we're purging all of the old uh, business model stuff and trying to reinvent the, uh, the industry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. <laughs>